three. This is lesson number two for week three. Um, you can't do this lesson if you've not done lesson number one. Um, and you also can't do this lesson if you've not done the lessons that you should have done in week two. OK, they all link on from each other. So make sure you've done those lessons and then come and sit down with at least three pieces of paper, a pencil and all of your completed mind maps on information about Martin Luther King that you should have done in your last lesson. That was lesson number one in week three. In this lesson, we're using the boxed up text map to create our own plans for our hot task biographies. It's exactly the same method that we've used in school a few times, even though it might look a little bit different because obviously it's not on flip chart paper like normal. Before you start this lesson, you need to turn three pieces of paper into the templates I'm about to show you. So take one piece of paper and make it, make it look like the paper on this screen. That means you're going to draw a line down the side, write heading, underneath heading, subheading, underneath subheading and leave a few gaps, born and keep going until your A4 piece of paper looks exactly like what is on this screen. Pause this video and do that now. Make your second piece of paper look like the piece of paper on this screen. Pause this video and do that now. And make your third piece of paper look like the piece of paper on this screen. Pause this video and do that now. Now we're going to start boxing up. This is the box up of our text map. The left hand column tells you what information needs to be included in this part of the text. The middle column is the exact text from our text map about um, our biography about Rosa Parks. And the far right column is where I will be boxing up my example biography on Gandhi. I'm using Gandhi as an example of how to change the text map, which is on Rosa Parks, into somebody else. You obviously are changing the text into Martin Luther King's biography. Writing that you might like to keep the same because it will help you with the structure of your sentences and it will help you um, include fronted adverbials and relative clauses in the appropriate place, I have left in black. Writing that you need to change because it is a fact that relates to Rosa Parks, it has been highlighted in red. So the first thing I need to do to create my box up for my own person, again, I'm doing it on Gandhi, you're doing it for Martin Luther King, is to look at my mind map. First of all, look at your mind map on the early life of Martin Luther King. Under each point, you should have all of the information you need about Martin Luther King. We're going to use the information from the mind map and use our example sentences from our text map to create new sentences for our new biographies. Here I've used the information that I wrote down in my mind map to complete everything that I'm going to write in the first section of my biography. I've also used the stem sentences from our text map to copy the structure where I can. If you did the lesson last week, you already had a practice at writing the early life section of somebody's biography. So I'm not going to talk through this one step at a time. All I will say is everything that you might want to change is highlighted in red and the things that you might want to keep the same are highlighted black. Although I've changed the part of the paragraph that relates to what life was like at that time, the sentence that starts at that time, you don't have to change it because 
the description for Rosa Parks' life also applies to Martin Luther King. Segregation was the law in many parts of the USA. Pause this video now and use the box stop text map, my box stop example, to help you box up your own sentences for your biography on Martin Luther King. Don't forget to include conjunctions, relative clauses and fronted adverbials if the left hand column asks you to do so. Well done, one third of the way through your plan. So you should now have a boxed up plan for what you'll be writing in the first section of your biography for Martin Luther King. Now we're going to have a look at the second section. I'll talk through the second section in more detail because you've not already had a practice go at it. So here is part of the box up of our second section of our text map. The subheading was the bust protest. This is the section that relates to the thing, the event that made the person famous or the event for which they are most famous. So to box up the second section of your plan for Martin Luther King's biography, you need to have your mind map on the second section in front of you. Your mind map should be complete with all of the information that you found in the video you watched in our last lesson. That means you should have facts relating to Martin Luther King and the thing he is most famous for, the I have a dream speech. So you're going to use the facts that you've written down in your mind map to create your box up. First of all, the subheading in our text map is the bus protest. Now, Gandhi didn't do a bus protest, and although Martin Luther King may have been involved in a bus protest, that's not what he's most famous for. So what do you want to change this subheading to? I've changed this subheading to the Salt March for Gandhi, because that's one of the things he's most famous for. What is Martin Luther King most famous for? What is your paragraph here going to be about? The next section of the text map describes the build up to the main event. So the build up to Rosa Parks' protest is her joining the NAACP. The build up to Gandhi's Salt March is him becoming leader of the Indian National Congress Party. What was the build up that you decided to write about when you were watching the video and filling in your mind map? If you have a date for when the build up event happened, use the date as a fronted adverbial in the same way that the text map does and my innovated example does. After you've described the build up to the main event, the next section of your box up describes the actual main event. You should have the date that the main event happened and ideally the age that the person was when the main event happened. I'd really like you to use the vocabulary that we've been learning um, and include the word landmark in your own innovation. And the next section now just adds more detail and more description about the main event. So what facts do you have about the main event itself that you can add here? For example, I added how far Gandhi walked on his salt march. Sorry, salt march. This section of the box up is the perfect place to try to include a conjunction and make a compound or a complex sentence. Pause the video now so that you have in front of you our boxed up text map, my boxed up innovation to use as an example, and have a go boxing up your own information for Martin Luther King's biography. The last part of the second section of the biography talks about what happened after the event. When I've innovated, um, in my example about Gandhi, I've used the same structure, so I've still used a fronted adverbial. In our text map, the fronted adverbial was after her arrest. 
In my innovation, I've changed that fronted adverbial to after the salt march. And I've then described some things that happened after the salt march because of all of Gandhi's protesting. So here you'll be describing some things that happened after the main event you've just been discussing. This video now and complete this last section of the second section of the biography. Almost there, you're two thirds of the way through. Now we're going to look at the last section of the biography, the end of life and legacy. This is what the last section of our text map looks like once you've boxed it up. So we've got subheading, any events that happen towards the end of life, death, how and when the person died and what legacy they've left behind. You need to have your mind map about Martin Luther King's end of life and legacy in front of you. It should look like mine, but all of the detail should be about Martin Luther King. So I'm going to start boxing up for my innovation on Gandhi. I'm keeping the subheading the same because I'm still talking about his end of life and legacy. In our text map, there are some things that happened towards the end of Rosa Parks' life before she died. And that's what's included in the first section of um, our paragraph here. You might not have anything to put in this section. Don't worry if you don't. I've written a little bit about how Gandhi continued protesting up until the time he died. The next couple of sentences are about how and when the person died. I've used exactly the same structure as the sentence in our text map and I've just changed the information for Gandhi. I've also added an extra sentence to include details about how Gandhi died. And in the final section, you need to think about the legacy that Martin Luther King has left behind. I have, in fact, magpied a lot of this section because Gandhi uh, leaves behind a similar legacy to Rosa Parks. And you might feel like this section is also appropriate to use for Martin Luther King. So pause this video now. Use the boxed up text map. My example innovation to create your own box up for your plan for Martin Luther King's biography.